1.2, measuring and constructing segments. Your essential questions are how can you measure and construct a line segment? So we're going to talk about measuring and constructing line segments. And then also how can you use unit or dimensional analysis? And we're going to um, cover this. This is, I think, a pretty important skill to have. Um, it can be used in the real world all the time. So the question we have here is how many feet are there in 140 centimeters? And yes, you can Google it, but if you want to use the algebra to get to your correct answer, there's a very simple way to do this. And it is called unit analysis, or dimensional analysis, depends on who you talk to, um, to figure us, to, um, oops, what happened to help us? Get rid of the figure. I don't know what I did there. So first, we need to know the, converse, the conversions from centimeters to feet. And we either know the following, or you can look them up. So these are some things that you should probably have in your in the back of your mind. One inch is 2.54 centimeters, and 12 inches is equal to one foot. I hope you all know the last one. Okay, so next, here's what you do. You use a product, product means multiplication, of fractions, in which the units you don't want reduce, and the units you do want stay. So in which the units you don't want reduce, and the ones that you do want stay. So in this example here, you can see that originally I had 140 centimeters. You can think of that as 140 centimeters over 1, right, because we can write every single number as a fraction. Well, not every number, but all rational numbers can be written as fractions. We'll talk more about that later. Now, centimeters is in the numerator, and centimeters is in the denominator, so those reduce. So now let's see. I also have inches in the numerator and inches in the denominator, so those reduce. Those are... It basically just reduced, meaning we divided out inches over inches, which means we divided by one. So these all become like little ones. Okay, so the only units I'm left with now are feet in the numerator. And then I'll have to do some math. I'll have to do some multiplication here. Uh, let's see, 140. These can both definitely be divided by, let's be divided by four. Four will go into that. Uh, two three times, yep, so we can divide both of these by four. So this will give me a three down here. If I divide this by four, let's just go ahead and do that real quick. So 35 times. And then you can just go through and you can now multiply straight across top and bottom. So you'd have the 35 times the one times the one. So I'm gonna just write a little fraction out over here. So it'll be 35 over, and then 2.54 times 3. Seven point six two. And then you just take that. Obviously, it gave you a decimal. So in my calculator, I'm just gonna go with 35 divided by 7.62. And I will end up with 4.59317583. And it looks like they rounded to the nearest hundred. I should say approximately. This is an approximation. So to show an approximation, I usually do little squiggly lines. They're like equal signs, but they're it's an approximation. Okay, now let's try a new another one. Let's try one on our own, where we have to find the area of the rectangle in square centimeters. Round your answer to uh, the nearest hundredth. And the hint here is to convert each dimension to centimeters first. All right, so I've got two inches, and I need to change those two inches to centimeters. Well, once again, let's see, I'm going to start with two inches. But I want to multiply that. Well, there's 2.54 centimeters per one inch. So I can write it just as a fraction, right? This is basically um, the uh, unit conversion right here is 2.54. Um, to centimeters to one inch. And I'll write two inches as a fraction by putting it over one. You can see that you have inches in numerator and denominator, so those reduce. We're just dividing top and bottom by inches, so those are gone. And so this is going to give us 5.08 centimeters. So I know that this is 5.08. I'll just write that down over there. I'll do the same thing. Um, with our six inches, write it as a fraction. We want to convert it to centimeters, so I got to get rid of the inches. So I'm going to 
Put the inches in the denominator, so one inch is the same as 2.54 centimeters. Once again, we just multiply straight across. Uh, what is that? 2.54. And I get 15.24 centimeters. See how those inches go away? And you're just left with centimeters in the top, so 15.24 centimeters. So this right here. So now from there I can figure out the area because area of any rectangle is always length times width. And my length here could be 15.24. Oops. I said 24, but I didn't write it to. And I'll multiply that by the width, which was 5.08. This is centimeters. Actually, this is why we don't use pen. If you're using pen, I apologize. Let's go like this. 15.24 centimeters times 5.08 centimeters. That way when we use the units, we can see that we have centimeters times centimeters. And area is always centimeters squared or units squared. So in my calculator, We'll get 77.4192 centimeters squared, but it asked us to round to the nearest hundredth. So I look at the hundredths place. I'll put approximately because it's not going to be an exact answer. Look at the hundredths place. Look at the digit after it. That's bigger. That's five or bigger. So I'm going to round up to 0.42. So it's 77.42 centimeters squared. Okay, moving on, we're going to use the Pythagorean theorem to find the length of the fold. Give your answers in centimeters. So once again, these are in inches. So I'll convert each of these to centimeters first. So I'll say, okay, I've got three inches. I want to get rid of the inches in the numerator, so I'm going to divide out one inch, which is equivalent to 2.54 centimeters, three inches over one. The inches reduce. Was seven point six two. And then let's see, I'll just write that here. And then I'll do the same thing with the five inches. Again, I want to get rid of the inches. So I put inches in the denominator with the equivalent amount of centimeters that goes in the numerator. Do the quick multiplication on my calculator. You can um, multiply it out. Oops, you gotta be able to type everything in. So 12.7 centimeters. Okay, so now that I have everything in centimeters, I can go ahead and I can find the length of this fold. Now, Pythagorean theorem is used on right triangles. This is something that you've learned in the past, I'm sure. The side of the triangle that is across from the 90 degree angle, we call that the hypotenuse. So I'm going to go ahead and just highlight that for you. This is our hypotenuse right here. And Pythagorean theorem always stated, I'll write it down here, leg squared plus leg squared will equal your hypotenuse squared. Or some of you guys maybe learned it like this, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Our hypotenuse is the thing that we don't know. So I'll just let that be h. How about that? And our two legs are the other two sides. They're the shorter sides of the right triangle. So I'm just going to use the, hypo the Pythagorean theorem to find the hypotenuse. So I'll do 7.62 squared plus the other leg, 12.7 squared. I could use units. So these are like centimeters squared, centimeters squared. I didn't do it. I won't go back and erase it this time. And this is going to equal the hypotenuse squared. Okay, so when I do this, let's see, 7.62 raised to the second power. 
Well, that gives me 58.0644. And then 12.7 raised to the second power gives me 161.29. Now to solve for h, I, I'm going to leave that there for now. I'm going to simplify the left side first, and then I'm going to solve for h. So I'll just go back. My calculator is kind of nice because I can kind of grab these numbers. And I just wanted to show you all these numbers without doing too much in my calculator. So we get 219.3544. So to undo a square, you take the square root, and this is an equation. I never got rid of my equation. I kept my equation the entire time. So that means that I can square root both sides of an equation and not have really, and basically have kept both sides equal. So I'm going to take the square root of this side and the square root of this side. Well, the square root of h squared is just h, and the square root of this number is 14.8106 approximately. Now our answer is supposed to be in centimeters. So let's remember that this was really centimeters being squared. So this was centimeters squared and this was centimeters squared. So really this answer right here is centimeters squared. And when you take the square root of centimeters squared, you just get centimeters. Okay, so I'm going to write it over here so I have a little bit more room. H is approximately 14.8. It doesn't say where, what to round to, right? How about I'll go to the thousands place? So three decimal places, right? I look at the thousands place, look at six, say to myself, all right, six is five or bigger, round that up. 14.8. That's a length, so it should just be in linear units. Whereas this was an area, right? So think of like drawing little squares here, so it should be in squared centimeters. Ruler postulate. Okay, so the ruler postulate is really not that big of a deal. This is not something that you necessarily have to commit to memory because I think you already know that. The points on a line can be matched one-to-one -one with real numbers. That's basically all this is saying, is that there is some coordinate on this um, line, and it can be matched with some number, just like the number line, right? The number line that you've been using forever, right? We can just basically match some numbers on this line. That's all that the ruler postulate really says. Now, in addition, this is more important. So the distance between points A and B, written as AB, okay, so this is actually, let me get my, my highlighter here. This part is very important. Okay, the distance between any two points, any two points on a line, which is written as those two points without a line on top of them, okay, so distance. is always going to be written as like, well, for this, the two points with no line on top of them. That tells me the distance of AB. What you do is you take the difference between the coordinates that have been lined up with A and B. So if this was 5 and this was 7, you take those and you subtract them, and then you take the absolute value. So it's because distance is always positive. Okay, so it's always positive. Okay, so the distance between points A and B written as just the two points is the absolute value of the difference of the coordinates of A and B. So once again, if this had been, um, let's say, this had been 5, this had been 7, then I would say something like AB is equal to the absolute value of 7 minus 5, or in other words, 2, right? 7 minus 5 is 2, and absolute value always means distance on a number line, so it's always positive. So this would just be, maybe I could write it like that, absolute value of 2, which equals 2. 
pretty simple, pretty straightforward, okay? Very, very, very important. Okay, so um, first of all, we're going to measure the length of segment AB. This is segment AB to the nearest tenth of a centimeter. So I'm going to take my ruler, and I'm going to use the centimeter side, and I'm going to line it up. And this is basically us using like the ruler postula, right? You can basically just take your ruler. You can say, okay, this is going to be at zero, and this is going to be, hmm, what is that? Well, this is 1.5, and there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So each one of these uh, little segments after 0.5 is going to be like a 0.1. Okay, so I've got 0 0.5, 0 0.6, 0 0.7 it looks like to me. So this appears to be about 1.7. Yours might be a little bit different than mine. But I got about 1.7 centimeters. So one way that I can, yeah, maybe it's 1.75, it can be 1.8, close enough, 1.7, I'm going to say approximately 1.75. When I look down on it, it might even be 1.8. Don't have my glasses on. <laughs> but um, I basically assigned numbers by just lining my ruler up, and then I said to myself, well, what's the length of this? Well, the length of AB here is really, and I know that this is very simple, and you're like, yeah, it's 1.5 centimeters, got it. But really what you're doing is you're taking that bigger number, subtracting the smaller number, right? And you're taking the absolute value of that, because that, if you were doing this with negative numbers, you'd end up with a negative. But the length of things is always going to be positive. So this is truly the absolute value of 1.75 or 1.75 centimeters. I should say approximately. Okay, let's talk about a construction. So a construction, and I put the page number where the definition comes from, and you, I would encourage you to read about those things and to look them up as we go over them. But basically a construction is a geometric drawing using, using a limited set of tools. The tools that we're going to use in um, today's age is a ruler and a compass. So you need these two things. Now back in ancient Greece, I don't think that they had metal rulers like this, so they probably just used anything that was a straight edge. So a lot of times, I'm going to put parentheses here, what we'll call these, I'm not going to put a period there anymore, is that we use a straight edge. and a compass. Okay, for us a straight edge is a ruler, but we could just go out and get like a straight piece of wood and use that too. Okay, so we're going to do our first construction. This is like the easiest construction in the world. So we're basically just going to use a ruler, use a compass to perform what we call a construction. So we use a compass and a straight edge to construct a line segment that has the same length as segment AB. Notice segment on top, AB, this segment right here. And I've given you all of the steps right here. So if I wasn't doing this with you, you could easily go back and just review this, and you would have all the steps right in front of you. <clears throat> Step one, draw some segments. So I'm going to use a straight edge to draw a segment longer than segment AB. Doesn't really matter how long, I'm just going to draw it. Label point C on the new segment. Oops, you guys can't see what I'm doing. There it is. Okay, just drew some long segment. It was longer than this one. Now, set your compass at the length of segment AB. So I'm basically going to take my compass, and I'm going to measure the width. I'm going to put one point on A and one point on B. That's the width of AB. That's me measuring the length. So set your compass at that length. 
then place the compass at C, so I'll place my point at C, and I'm going to mark point D on the new segment so that CD has the same length. So I'm basically just going to do an arc. That tells me exactly where the second point should be. And now segment CD is the same as segment AB. They are congruent. So I'm going to say that. I'm going to say the length of AB, right, that's length, is equal to the length of CD. I can also write it like this. Segment AB is congruent to segment CD. Those are two different ways to write that same sentence. This involves lengths. This involves just the segments themselves. When we're talking about lengths, we use equal signs. Segments themselves congruent. And here we are. We're going to talk more about that right now. <clears throat> so, line segment, <coughs> sorry, line segments that have the same length are called congruent segments. That's what that little congruent symbol was. So if they have the same length. Same size, basically. You can say the length of AB is equal to the length of CD, or you can say that segment AB is congruent to CD. And the symbol, this little equal sign with the tilde on top, means is congruent to. So this little symbol right here is very important. So these are all ways that we show that things are congruent or of equal length. First of all, to show that they are the same measure, the same length, we can use these little tick marks. Those are very important. When we say that lengths are equal, we can use an equal sign, and then we talk about the lengths themselves. We don't put the little segment on top. So this is, is equal to. And then if they're when they're when we want to say that they're congruent, because basically all these things mean exactly the same thing. But you can then say, or they're congruent. Well, when you say that two things are congruent, you do put the little segments on top or the whatever else you are using. It could be different shapes, like triangles or something. Okay, you put the little segments on top for the segments, and then you put the congruent symbol in between. So this is as equal to, it's got an equal sign, it's congruent to, it has the congruent sign, and it also has little segments on top. All right, let's move on to example two, comparing segments for congruence. So plot these points. We're going to plot P, Q, R, and S. So you always start at the origin. So for P, I'm going to go negative 4 on the horizontal or the x-axis, and then 3 on the vertical axis. So 1, 2, 3, 4, and then I go up 3. 1, 2, 3. I'm going to label that P. Q, start at the origin. I go right 3, up 3. That's Q. R, left 1, up 4. So I'm going to go start at the origin, left 1, up 4. This is R. Notice how I'm always labeling with the points that were given to me. So make sure you do that. And then S is negative 1, negative 2. So starting at the origin, go left 1 and then down two. So you always go along the x-axis first, then along the y-axis. This is S. Okay, now determine whether PQ, segment PQ, and segment RS are congruent. All right, so RS is this segment right here. <clears throat> and PQ is this segment right here. Now, I know that you can just count the little boxes and you can figure this out, but things are going to get more tricky, so I would like to teach you guys a couple of different things. Anytime you're looking for a horizontal length, just like we learned with the ruler postulate, to find the horizontal length, you take any of the two measurements in the horizontal direction and you subtract them. Well, on a coordinate plane, the horizontal length is going to be along the x-axis. Okay, so for horizontal, here, I'm going to write it over here. You're basically going to do the absolute value of x2 minus x1, and that's going to give you the horizontal length. Okay, so let's apply that to p and q. So for the length of pq, 
I'm going to take 3, which is an x-coordinate, right? Absolute value. And subtract from that the other x-coordinate, which is negative 4. Well, that's really, subtracting a negative is the same as adding, right? So this is the same as 3 plus 4, absolute value. Or the same as the absolute value of 7, which is basically just 7. Now, let's do the same thing for the vertical. So vertical can be worked out exactly the same. You're going to end up doing a lot of this like when we start graphing um, trigonometric functions, which won't be this year. But you're going to need to have these skills. So how do I find the length between two vertical? Well, it's just like the horizontal where you use the x-coordinates. Now you're just going to use the y-coordinates. So it'll be y2 minus y1, the absolute value of that. Let's see. So I should probably highlight these for you. So anytime you want to find horizontal lengths, you just subtract those x-coordinates or those horizontal coordinates. Anytime you want to find the vertical length, you just subtract the vertical coordinates or the y-coordinates. So for R and S, for their length, I'm just going to take the y-coordinate. So the y-coordinate of R is 4 minus the y-coordinate of S, which is negative 2. Now, could I have just done that from here? Yeah, for P and Q, actually, let's do it for R and S. For R and S, I could have just taken this Y coordinate and this Y coordinate and subtracted them. I didn't even have to graph it. Same thing's happening, double negative. So this is really a 4 plus 2, which is the absolute value of 6, which equals 6. So are these congruent? Are these two segments congruent? No, their lengths are not equal. I'll say something like uh, the lengths are not equal. Therefore, and I use three little dots to mean therefore. This is like accepted in math, like this is just a symbol for therefore. If you don't know what that is, just write it down. The lengths are not equal, therefore the segments are not congruent. And I'll use a congruent symbol. Moving on, segment addition postulate. This is actually quite simple. What this is saying is that if you, if on a segment, like for example, segment AC, if you take the parts of that segment, like AB and BC, and you add them together, then you're going to get the whole length. Okay, so let's do that with this one. This one's pretty. I think this is pretty simple. I mean, this is a very important postulate. So it's a segment addition postulate. B has to be in between. So the points that you're talking about, you know, you have to have these points that, like, are kind of together. So B is somewhere in between A and C. Just like here for XZ, well, Y is a point in between, and I know XY, and I also know YZ. So I can just add those together. So I know that the length of xz will equal the length of xy plus the length of yz. Basically just using the segment addition postulate right there. Now I can actually plug in what I know. Well, I don't know xz yet, but I do know xy is 14. I'll put xz still. And I do know that yz is 27. So if I add those together, uh, 14 and 27, I think is going to give me 41. So xz is 41. Notice how I wrote an equation and I kept my equation. I highly recommend that you learn to write using um, equations, which are basically math sentences. Do the same thing here. Problem is I don't know CD. Okay, but I do know that BD, by the ruler postulate, or sorry, not the ruler postulate, segment addition postulate, BD is going to be the same as BC plus CD. 
And I know right now that you're saying, well, why can't I just take 25 and subtract 19? You totally can, and that's about what we're about to do. So let's see, I know BD is 25. BC is 19. I don't know what CD is. That's what I'm going to figure out. Well, how am I going to solve for CD? I'm going to subtract 19 from both sides to get CD by itself. What will happen is you're going to get really complicated amounts here. And if you don't know how to set up these equations, it's going to get quite tricky. And I'll show you that. All right, so this is what, 6? Which makes total sense, and I know that you could have probably done that in your head, but that's not making good practices so that later on when the problems get more challenging, uh, you know how to do the algebra behind it. And when we do some of these problems in class, we're going to have algebraic expressions. They'll have like x and z and all kinds of um, variables in it that you're going to have to figure out. Okay. So here's another example of um, using the segment addition postulate. The cities shown on the map lie approximately in a straight line. So from Sacramento to San Bernardino. Find the distance from Sacramento, California to San Bernardino in miles. And this is given to us in miles. So basically I know that from Sacramento to San Bernardino, sorry, from Sacramento to Fresno, and then from Fresno to San Bernardino, that's going to give me the entire distance, right? So I can take 158 miles and add 230 miles, and that's going to give me my entire, my entire distance from Sacramento to San Bernardino. Uh, what is that? It's 158 plus 230 is 388 miles. Okay, that was pretty simple. So now let's turn that into feet. So I know that one mile is equal to 5,280 feet. So I'll start with what I know, 388 miles. Now I want to multiply that by something that if whatever unit I put down here is going to reduce with the miles, and I'm going to be left with feet. So I'm going to put <clears throat> one mile in the denominator, because now the miles go away. And one mile is the same as 5,280 feet. And I'm going to be left with feet when I'm all done here. I can put 388 over 1 and just multiply straight across. So let's see, 388 <clears throat> times 5,280 will give me, ooh, that's a lot of my, uh, feet. So, <clears throat> sorry, uh, 2,048,640 feet. That's a lot of feet. That's because there's a lot of feet in a mile. And we had a lot of miles we were dealing with. 